Hello, bonjour, and welcome to Gus McDowell's Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. I'm Nick McDowell. In this series, we use the missions in the game Firefight to illustrate one or more aspects of World War II infantry tactics at the company level and below. Each episode, we conduct basic mission analysis, develop and analyze possible courses of action, then decide and execute the plan in real time, followed by lessons learned. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to buy me a coffee, the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Before we start, a quick shout out. I received my copy of the game Firefight, free from the developer, Sean O'Connor. He has been assisted with graphics, data and sound, all of which are great, but is otherwise a one-person coding and development team for this game, and has done a fantastic job. In Firefight, you can play battles across nine maps on the Western Front from 1940 to 1945, with eight battles to a map. There are also maps and battles for the Eastern Front. You can play as the Germans, British, Americans, and Soviets. And also as the French. This got me intrigued, and I decided to turn these individual French battles into a campaign. So, let's introduce the Battle of France campaign. We will talk a little about the historical battle, we will briefly consider French tactical doctrine, and we will take a look at French weapons from this time period. Then we will have a quick look at the controls for Firefight before starting our first battle in the next episode. Throughout this series, we will use historical World War II French military map symbols to explain battle plans. If you want a primer on what these mean, check out the video World War II French military map symbols. The Battle of France was fought from the 10th of May to the 25th of June 1940, and resulted in a German victory. I have long been fascinated by the Battle of France, but have never felt I understood what really happened, so I couldn't resist the temptation to play this campaign as the French. The Battle of France is not simulated in many war games, which is a little surprising. History and popular culture have not been kind to the French for the speed and apparent ease of the German victory. And the battle is surrounded by myths and mistruths. For example, the heavy casualties on both sides testify that German victory may have been quick, but was not so easy. The battle was quickly followed by the so-called miracle at Dunkirk. Then the Battle of Britain. And for France, long years of occupation and resistance. All of which had narratives better suited to the Allied cause, the Battle of France became an embarrassing footnote in history, and the performance of the French military the source of many Anglophone jokes to this day. But at the time, the outcome did not seem so preordained. In fact, everyone expected the French to win, and with good reason. France was the preeminent military power in the first half of the 20th century. Both sides started the battle with roughly equal strength in troop numbers. The French started with almost twice as many guns, two-thirds more tanks, but fewer aircraft. French tanks and aircraft were equal to or better than their German equivalents. The French had also motorised to a greater extent than the Germans. And only 20 years earlier, the French and their allies had decisively beaten the German field army in the First World War. So, why did the French lose? That could well be the topic of another video. But suffice to say, it was a combination of poor French strategy and operational method, combined with better than expected performance by the Germans. In other words, France lost, and Germany won. Factors such as speed of decision making, communications, and mobility all played their part. As a result, the French suffered around twice as many casualties as the Germans. Most explanations of the German victory and French defeat focus on the strategic and operational levels of the battle, but the accounts also indicate the French fought hard and well at the tactical level. So, I want to know, could units of French soldiers, using historical French tactical doctrine and weapons, defeat their German counterparts at the company level and below? Let's find out. In this campaign, we will be using tactical doctrine from the Manuel de Garde d'Infanterie from October 1939, this was the key tactical doctrine publication for the French Infantry Corps. 
and my thanks to the Bibliothèque Nationale de France for publishing the manual on its website where it is available for everyone to read. By 1940, the French had mechanised and motorised to a greater extent than the Germans. They also emphasised combinaison des armes, or combined arms, that is, using infantry, tanks, artillery and aviation in combination. And French doctrine emphasised that the offensive is the preeminent mode of action. But French military doctrine going into the Second World War was heavily influenced by their experience in the First World War, with modifications and modernisations. Specifically, the French developed the concept of bataille conduite, or the methodical battle. Methodical battle doctrine favoured a highly rigid battle where units moved obediently between phase lines and adhering to strict timelines. Tightly controlled battles relied on massed artillery and movement of infantry in short bounds led by heavy support tanks. Modern weapons gave the advantage to the defender, so a methodical approach was needed to weaken and destroy opponents in the defence. This approach was appropriate for positional warfare, such as the trench warfare of 1918, but not to countering the kind of fast mobile warfare practised by the Germans. Before we commence the action in the next episode, let's review the key French units and weapon systems modelled in the game. Infantry Mortars Anti-tank Half-tracks Armoured cars Light tanks Cavalry tanks and heavy tanks. Finally, let's look at the game controls. This game has very simple controls. In fact, you're looking at the manual. Instructions. Selecting a squad. To select a squad, simply tap on any of its squad members. Alternatively, tap on the squad's number in the control panel at the bottom of the screen. Moving a squad. To move a selected squad, drag its blue squad go to marker. You can rotate the marker and stretch it by dragging one of its ends. Once you release the marker, the squad will endeavour to move to its new designated go to position. Squad Orders. From the control panel, you can click on the fire button to tell your squad to open fire on a designated point. Once you have tapped on the fire button, tap and hold on the game screen where you would like the squad to fire at. Open fire! The ceasefire button will cancel the fire order. Boo! The move it button is used for when the squad members aren't moving quickly enough for your liking. It will make them more likely to move, but you may be putting them in danger as they may not be moving for a reason. The last two buttons are for ordering your squad to arrange itself in a line or column. The control panel. The control panel shows you a zoomed out map of the game area with flashing blue dots representing your units and flashing red dots for where enemy units were last seen. 
It also shows a squad selection keypad and a button to select an artillery fire mission. Next to this are the details of the currently selected squad. Its description and individual squad members are shown along with buttons to give the squad commands. You can select an individual squad member by tapping on his icon. The selected squad member's details are shown, which for infantry are the man's heartbeat, rate and lactic acid level, and for vehicles their speed, engine revs, gear and brake lever positions. Zooming out. Use the mouse wheel to zoom out and view the entire game area. Your squads will be shown as markers and enemy markers will be shown where you last saw members of that enemy squad. The toolbar. At the top of the screen is a tab which can be used to pull down the toolbar. On this toolbar are buttons to turn the sound effects on and off, to quit the game and to bring up these instructions. If you quit a game you will be returned to the scenario chooser screen, but you are able from there to resume the game you quit from where you left off. Artillery. Tap on the artillery button in the control panel to select a fire mission. Select either high explosive or smoke. And then tap and hold on the screen where you would like the mission to strike. Requesting artillery. A few ranging shots will be fired before the whole battery can fire for effect.
victory. Once you have moved troops onto the objective and enemy activity appears to have subsided, you will be declared victorious. This is a game which is very simple to play, but very hard to master. So, that is the introduction to Firefight and the French Campaign. Next episode, the fighting starts in earnest with the advance on Chateau Marchand. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.